Um, and we already kind of jumped into this a little bit, uh, but navigating the iOS. So, a second ago, we were in user exec mode. Um, you know, what, you're, what you start out in whenever you initially get into the router. Um, and just like we saw a second ago, you're gonna have that router or the, whatever the host name is and the, uh, the greater than sign. You've got limited commands available. Uh, most, co most show commands will work, but you can't get uh, very far beyond that uh, because your, your limitations are so heavy. Um, it can be further restri restricted with additional configuration as well. Now once you jump into enable mode, you get into privileged exec mode. Uh, and that's where you'll see the, the pound sign. So it can be, uh, can be accessed from user exec mode by typing in the enable command as well as any password required if you've got one set for enable. Um, it generally has access to all commands excluding configuration commands unless you first access config modes. Um, and then beyond that, uh, we've got the various configuration modes. So I can actually, I wish this was smaller so I could have that up at the same time. Um, so like on this guy right now, you know, we right here we we jumped out of privilege exec, uh, typed in enable, got us into uh, exec user exec mode, and uh, now we're at a point where we can jump into configuration mode. So, if I was to type in config t or configure uh, terminal, oh, and I guess if I spelt it right, that would also. Um, now we're we're at the next mode, which is global configuration mode, where you you still got the pound symbol, but you've got the uh, this config uh, in parentheses right right next to it. So this is gonna be silly jumping back and forth. So global configuration mode uh, can be accessed from privileged exec mode by entering the config terminal command. Uh, it is used to enter all router configurations. Now, in addition to global configuration mode, you've got some sub configuration modes. Uh, there, there are actually a lot more beyond this, um, but a couple of the primary ones are interface configuration and line configuration. So, if I want to configure like a, a particular interface, and we'll just keep jumping back and forth like this. Uh, so, I don't even know what interfaces I have on here, so let's look at that first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. If it supports it. Okay. That's a. Jason actually brought up a, a, an important command. Like, so I was trying to enter in a command that um, you, you can't. This is not a configuration command, so it doesn't, it doesn't allow for it. A lot of those commands, like if you're in config mode and you don't want to have to jump out of it, if you put do in front of it, it'll basically do that from the, the normal enabled mode. Um, so, in this particular case, I've got uh, looks like you know five Ethernet interfaces and fast Ethernet interfaces and one a, a VLAN one virtual interface that isn't assigned. Um, so, if I want to make configuration changes to let's say uh, fast Ethernet four, because I think that's actually the WAN port for this, um, you would just type in interface and then the name of the interface. hit enter and you guys can see it changes to the config-if to, to let you know that you're still in interface configuration mode and you know from here I can you know set an IP address uh, I can unshut the port to bring it up uh, and we'll get it we'll get into like these actual uh, configurations like later um, but you know you got a whole host of things you can do from that that sub um, that sub configuration mode of the interface, and so if I want to get out of there, um, I'm done with done with that. I want to jump out of um, interface configuration mode, but not out of uh, configuration mode altogether. I just type in exit. If um, if you want to jump out all together, you know, type in and you're back to the the standard. So um, and then additionally, on the, the second part of that slide, or the bottom part of that slide, you can jump into the configuration for your various lines. So you, you got your line console, your line aux, your line VTY. So um, if I wanted to set this guy up with, uh, with Telnet access, you know, 
line VTY, and then the what follows after uh, VTY is actually the number of sessions. Standard is um, is five, so you know the first one would be zero, last one would be four. Um, you can set that up to 15, so um, I think I would guess zero through 14. It may actually vary depending on the router model, like how many of that you, you set. Um, but that means like up to five people at one time could be uh, consoled into this. So you would get either denied or get a, an error message if you had five people already terminaled into it and then uh, a, a sixth one came along. Um, and then you know from there you can you can set commands um, you know, login local or you can set an actual like specific login for VTY. Uh, but the, the main point I'm trying to get across here, we're not actually jumping too much into configuration is the the configuration mode that config dash line. You know, same thing for uh, the console. You, know, you can jump in there and change speed, do whatever you want. I can change the speed right now and kick myself out. That'd be nice. Okay, so back to the slides. Okay, so uh, interface configuration. Uh, I think we pretty much nailed all that down. Used to enter sub configurations of specific interfaces such as IP address, duplex, etc. And then line configuration like we just did as well. Um, used for config settings for line access methods including console, auxiliary, and VTY ports. And then uh, the command structure. Um, you can use context sensitive help so like if you um, for instance you put in like you want to know what follows show, like what all your show options. You can type in show space and then a question mark, and it's going to give you all the options that'll follow specifically for show. And you can keep doing that until you get to a stopping point. I'll, sh I'll actually show some of those in a second. Uh, abbreviations. As long as the um, you get enough of a, a config line or a command line in there that it's not going to confuse it with another command line, you can stop there. So, like a minute ago. I didn't have to type in configure terminal, I just typed in config t because there's nothing on either of those words that's going to be mistaken um, for something else. Um, shortcut keys, I don't even use shortcut keys. It, there's a lot of stuff going on in the book that explains like the various ones for you. I don't really use them, I like paging down, paging up, just whatever. And then uh, common syntax errors, ambiguous commands, um, like we just talked about for, um, you know, for config t, it always it knows I'm saying config terminal. If I, if say there were two other options like config something else that starts with T and I just put T, I would have to at least put the E so it knows the difference with between the two. Um, incomplete command. That, so that's an ambiguous command, like where it doesn't know like whether you're meaning this command or another one because you're not typing out the full command. Incomplete command. It, what's up? Could be just like typing in show and not putting anything after it. Well, no. that's an incomplete compa command. An ambiguous command is where like. It's, it's gone enough that it, it can narrow it down between two or three options, but it doesn't know which one you're, you're choosing. It's okay, so more like a show and then space I. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, because, you know, show... It, well, actually, show I might work, because well, I don't know if there's anything like else I want to enter. Like show IP init, or show interface F. Yeah. And then you get I'll, I'll actually <laughs> show some examples in just yeah. a second here. Um, incomplete commands is where you don't have enough, so that would be if you just put show and then nothing after it and didn't know what else to do. And then invalid input is something where it's just not acceptable at all. Um, so like, let's see. Uh, I also found, you know, tab does word auto completion. Yeah. And if you have a command um, that has the same letter or like the first three characters are the same and you try to hit tab for auto word completion, it won't let you complete the word. Until you type at least more than those characters that don't match. So, like for instance, show. It does. It doesn't know what you want. It's, so it gives you that option to list the subcommand. So that that would be an uh, example of an incomplete command. So you know, show question mark, and they've got show blah 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 blah. So if I were to type show a and nothing else, that would be an ambiguous command because you have all of these options up here that start with a. Whereas, like, if I put a d, there's nothing else that starts with a d, so it would at least know that I'm talking about it adjacency. Um, I'm not actually going to jump into that because I don't know what showing adjacency has anything to do with. Uh, let's see. Show. 